Hello and welcome back Supermums. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you three of my favourite home hacks that keep life calmer and more organised. <laughs> As always, please make sure you are liking, sharing and subscribing so we can reach more mums and help them live a calmer motherhood too. So why I am a big believer in the bigger picture and looking at all those big, wonderful strategies for creating a life you love, being more organised, all the decluttering. Sometimes the attention is in like those teeny tiny little details and I'm sharing with you three of my favourites today. The first one is these fabric bags. Like I, this is a leftover one. Very, very basic. From my daughter's first birthday, we did decorate your own. So we had fabric pens and these fabric bags and just happened to have one left. Uh, the, I have two of these in my office and two in our kitchen. So our house is very tall and thin. So we have four floors and I am constantly carrying stuff around there's lots of things and I don't like leaving a room if there's something in that room that shouldn't be in that room I don't want to leave it there I want to move it to the next thing but I'm often carrying my daughter up and down the stairs still or it's just so many little things and you can't keep hold of them and having these bags means that I can throw everything in one place and just throw the bag over my shoulder and move it from one place to the other you probably could have them on every floor if you wanted to if you have more than two floors but I find that the office which is the very very top floor and then our ground floor and then we have a basement level our ground floor is our kitchen floor so having two on each floor means that I've always got one handy so sometimes my partner has to leave for work and I haven't finished getting ready I'll throw my hair dryer my hairbrush um whatever I'm gonna put my hair up with in this bag my phone all the bits and pieces and I can throw it on my shoulder and carry it downstairs to take over my little one and have all the bits and just dry my hair in the sitting room and then throw everything back in the bag and I'll leave the bag at the bottom of the stairs and we then go out when I come back all I've got to do is grab the bag again and it can go back to my room and this is my only plain one I have one from an amazing conference that I went to I have one that was uh, gifted to me when I did some work for mush so that's got nice memories and then one from this baby brand that I really liked as well so they all have like nice happy memories attached to them so if you don't have any most people do now have these kind of things lying around if you don't uh, next time you're somewhere that you have a really special memory you could get a bag from it and then it will also spark joy as not just a functional item, but as a memory as well. My second hack is the 60 second rule. Now you can adjust this, it could be the five minute rule or the 30 second rule, depending on what stage you're at in motherhood. So how young your kids are will depend how long a rule this can be. At the moment with my two year old, 60 seconds seems to work quite well. But if she was smaller, it might need to be 30 seconds. When she's in school, I might manage a five minute rule. And it's basically any job that can be done that you're like looking at it and you go, oh, that needs to be doing. If it's 60 seconds or less, I will do it then. It doesn't need to go onto my to-do list. It doesn't need to go into my tasks or anything like that. And this could be, like I say, if you've got a bit more flexibility of time, it could be a five minute rule or a three minute rule, but you have in your head what that number is. So it's about making that number specific, specific to you if you see a task and you're like, that's going to take me 60 seconds or less, you just do it then. This stops that to-do list filling up. Like I've talked about this before, about how your to-do list should be this lovely flowing river, not the Dead Sea, where stuff flows in and stuff doesn't flow out and just everything comes to die. It should be this lovely flowing river. Um, I will talk about that more in future videos about like pimping your to-do list to make it work better for you. Making things happen without them having to get to the point where they're on your to-do list is a brilliant way of doing this. And my number three hack is the one touch rule. One touch, finish what you need to do with it. The example of this would be, we do our laundry in the room in our spare bedroom, which is next to my office. I might have all the laundry and take it downstairs. I've now touched it. I'm in my one touch process. I have to take it and put it away. Slight obsession, like, it could be that I'm then going to pick my, get my daughter up because she's on the next floor down. I could be going to get her up and we run out of time, but very rare. 
very rare usually if i've picked up the laundry the laundry is then going to go away it's not just going to go and get dumped onto another surface so i've picked up a spoon i've stirred the dinner or i've served the dinner it's now finished i'm going to finish using that i'm going to put it in the, the dishwasher or i'm going to put it by the sink ready to be washed up i'm not just going to abandon it on the side and they're tiny little tweaks as you're going to put something down thinking well i could put it down here or I could walk like three strides that way and put it down and finish using it. Like finish using things. Same with like, you've finished an item, don't put it back in the fridge, put it in the recycling bin, rinse it out, put it in the recycling bin, depending on how strict your recycling policies are where you are. Finish using the thing, one touch, pick it up, use it fully and then put it down, put it away where it's meant to go, and don't just abandon things. This is quite an interesting one to teach your kids. So I'm now starting to teach my toddler this. She's nearly able to undress herself. I have to do like the fiddly buttons and things and she'll undress herself. And then she'll dump it on the floor and sort of look at me. And I'll be like, where do we put it? Can you go and put it in the laundry basket? And because we have laundry baskets all over the place, we have little and, little and often laundry baskets, she can go and put it away. She finishes with the thing. And I'm always teaching her now when we take off our hat, she takes it off and just throws it on the floor. And then I, she has to do another step and it's slowly building her up to being taking it off and putting it away as opposed to taking it off and dumping it and then picking it up again. Because we don't, we don't leave things there, that's not where it lives. But it's funny how much we do this ourselves. If we start doing it properly, the kids start to catch on, they start to copy a little bit. I've even noticed this with like people that come into my house because if they're arriving with me and I'm taking my shoes off and putting my shoes straight on the rack, then they do the same thing. <laughs> Subtle manipulation. Little bonus tip for you is try and do these things with happiness. If we want the people around us to start mimicking these actions, start copying these actions, particularly if our kids are young, if we look like we're hating it, they're gonna think it's a bad thing and they're not gonna wanna do it. Whereas if you're happy doing these things, even if it's forced and fake to start with, it's gonna rub off on them. So the bigger tasks, we put on music, we dance around in our pants while doing them, we will make it a fun thing. We will get dressed up to do the gardening. like. I'm not in my Sunday best. I'm not gonna put on a pretty dress. Uh, shout out to Pat Pat, where this dress came from. You can't really see the bottom, which is the best bit, never mind. We're not gonna put on the pretty dress to do the gardening, but we're gonna get dressed to do the gardening and it's gonna be an exciting experience. And you do feel a little bit cheesy to start with, but it does eventually make a difference and you find yourself feeling energized and they see that you're energized and happy doing it. So they feel like it's a fun thing to be doing. Like, no one told us that these like general little household tasks were bad. We just watched our parents hating doing them. So of course we learned that they were bad. Maybe we can turn that on its head. I found it's made a massive difference. My kid loves joining in with these things at the moment. Let's hope it continues. I would love to hear about what your hacks are in your home, those little things that make a massive difference to keeping things calmer and more organized. So please hit me up in the comments down below with what those are. Maybe I can share a video of all your amazing hacks in the future. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.